today, I'm going to show you how to create long videos with perfect character consistency using a Grok AI that is completely free and unlimited. And the best part, you can also do this on your mobile. The process is exactly the same. Let's dive in. As soon as we arrive on our computer screen, the very first thing we need to create any kind of video is the story. Now, for the story generation, you have options. You can use ChatGPT, or if you prefer, you can use Gemini. The process is going to be exactly the same for both. You can use whichever tool you are more comfortable with. Personally, I prefer using Gemini for this. So, I have opened Gemini here. I'm going to give it a prompt. Write a short story in Disney style. I've specified that there should be two characters, and the story length should be approximately 60 seconds. You can see here, Gemini has generated the entire story for me very quickly. Now, to take this further and create visuals, I ask it to give me visual prompts for this story. And keep in mind, the prompts should be connected to the previous ones so that the flow runs smoothly. And I need 12 prompts. The reason is that Grok creates five second clips. So to make a one minute video, we need 12 prompts. As you can see, it has provided me with all 12 prompts. Now, what I will do is simply copy the very first prompt from this list. I'll open a new tab in my browser and search for Grok. I want to mention that Grok is currently completely free to use, and it is unlimited, which is fantastic. I am going to show you the entire method, step by step. If you look over here at the sidebar on the left, you will see the Imagine option. If you click on that, it gives you the prompt bar right at the bottom. However, if you don't see it there for some reason, you can also simply click on the Create Image button right here on the home page, and it will take you to the exact same place. So this is the prompt bar where we are going to enter our text. You will notice there are two distinct options here, one for video and one for image. You can also see the aspect ratios listed here. You can select whatever ratio fits your project's needs. You have the choice to generate a video directly from the text, or you can choose to generate an image first. I am going to simply select the image option for now. I'll paste the prompt I copied, and it will immediately start generating our image. It usually provides quite a few variations. Typically, the first three or four results are excellent. I'm looking at them now. I really like this third result. It looks perfect for our style. So I will go ahead and select this one. Once you have clicked on the image to select it, you will see some options appear at the bottom. You need to click on Make a Video. Here, we simply paste that exact same image generation prompt again to guide the animation. You will see there are some video presets available that you can check out, but for this specific video, I am not going to select any of them, I've pasted the prompt. And now I will simply hit the Make Video button. It is going to take just a few seconds to process. Okay, the video is ready. This is the result, check it out. It looks great. Now, this is where the main game actually begins. The challenge of how to keep the characters consistent. Now, I need to go and copy the next visual prompt from our list. Before I do the right method, I want to give you a quick reality check of what happens if you do it the normal way. If I simply copy the next prompt and paste it here directly, let me show you an example of what goes wrong. Do you see this result? None of these new pictures match our previous image or our previous video characters at all. Let me give you a more detailed example so you understand. I'll open this one and I'll follow the same process. I'll select the image, I'll feed it the animation prompt, and I'll ask it to generate the video. Now, let's look at the result it gives. Okay, the video is ready. I will download this specific clip, and I will also download the very first frame video we made earlier. And I'm going to bring both of them into CapCut to show you the difference I have imported them both here into the timeline. I'll just quickly adjust the settings so I can clearly show you what I am talking about. Now, just focus on the transition point. Watch this. Do you see that? As soon as the video moves from the first frame to the next frame, it does not look natural in the slightest. It looks very strange. The characters change, and the vibe breaks. So, to fix this, we go back to the very first video we generated. We need to pause the video and scrub the player right to the very end, to the last second. Then, right-click on the video and find the option that says, Copy Video Frame. Click that to copy it. Now, Go back to the prompt bar at the bottom and simply paste that frame there. The special thing about Grok is that as soon as you paste a frame, it automatically triggers the video generation process. As you can see, I just pasted the frame, and it has already started making a video on its own. This is the result it generated automatically. 
However, this automatic animation is not what we want because it's not following our script. So what you have to do is select the image option again at the bottom. So it recognizes the frame as a starting image. Then go and copy the prompt for your next visual scene. Come back here and paste it into the text box. Now it will start generating the video again, but this time using our prompt. See, the video is created. Now let's check the result. In this specific clip, you can clearly see that the transition from the end of the first frame to the start of this second frame is completely smooth and seamless. I want to give you a practical proof of this, just like before. I will download this new video clip exactly like I did with the previous one. I'll select both the first clip and this new consistent clip and bring them into CapCut. I'll drag and drop them onto the timeline here. Same process as before. Let me demonstrate. You need to watch very closely how these two frames, these visuals, interact with each other and how a natural transition is formed between them. Check this out right now. Did you see that? It looks completely natural, as if it's one continuous shot. Now, we just continue this chain. In the same way, you pause this current video, drag the slider to the very end, right click and select copy video frame, then go back to the prompt bar and paste that image. As I mentioned, as soon as you paste that frame, Grok will essentially jump the gun and start making a video automatically. We can ignore that. While that is happening in the background, I will go back to my script and copy the prompt for the third frame. The video is being made. Okay, it's done. Again, I will pause this automatic result. From the bottom, under the video or image toggle, I will select image again so that it loads that last frame as our reference. Then I paste the prompt for the third frame and hit the make video button. It is processing and it has made the next video. It is doing everything exactly according to the specific details in our script. The transitions are going to be perfectly natural. I will show you this one last time in CapCut, just to be sure. And then I will tell you what steps we need to take next. I'll drag and drop this third frame into CapCut. Let me quickly show you the transition here. You saw that. The first three frames have flowed together with such smooth transitions. Now, for the rest of the video, you simply have to repeat this loop. Pause the video. Go to the last frame, copy the frame, paste it in the prompt bar, and add the next prompt. Now, I am going to tell you about a very useful setting that will save you time. If you go into Grok's settings menu and look here under the behavior tab, scroll down just a little bit. There is an option called enable automatic video generation. You should essentially turn this off. If you leave it on, it automatically starts making a video every single time you paste a frame, which wastes your time and generates videos you don't need because you haven't added your prompt yet. So my advice is to simply turn it off. I am going to quickly go ahead and create all the remaining clips for the story. Okay, fast forward. I have readied all 12 frames for our video. Now simply export all of these. The next major component we need is a high quality voiceover. For that, open a new tab in your browser and search for Google AI Studio. Click on the link to open it. You will see an interface that looks something like this. If you look at the bottom of the screen, there is a specific option labeled text to speech with Gemini. Click to open that. This tool is excellent. It is completely free and it is unlimited. You can essentially generate hours and hours of voiceover content here for free. Once you are in, look at the right side and select single speaker audio. Below that, you will see a list of different voice models available. You should test them out one by one and see which one suits your story best. Whatever sounds good to your ears, select that model and then go back to the main text area. Now, I will go back to my Gemini script and copy my entire story text to generate the voiceover. I'll copy it, come back to Google AI Studio, and simply paste the text right here. Now, look in the bottom right corner. There is a run button. Click that button and it will immediately start generating the voiceover for you. In just a few seconds, it will have your complete voiceover ready to go. Okay. It looks like the voiceover is ready. You can listen to it and then simply click here to download it to your computer. Now that the file is downloaded, simply drag and drop it into your CapCut timeline. Now we need to do some basic editing and cleanup settings. We need to listen through and delete any extra silences or spaces in the audio. I will simply cut these empty parts out to make it tight. You can obviously edit this in your own preferred way if you have a specific method you like, but the general process is the same. Just follow the process of cleaning up the audio. I will lock this audio track now because I am done adjusting it and I don't want to move it by mistake. Now, 
I will drag and drop all 12 of our video animation clips into CapCut. Bring them all into the timeline. Now, the task is simply to arrange them. I need to align the specific video clips with the specific parts of the voiceover where they fit the story. Now, I am going to extract the audio from these video clips. I will show you how they sync with the voiceover. I will simply select them and lower the volume significantly so it acts as a background noise. Next, we need to fix the format. Come to the video ratio settings in CapCut and set it to 9 to 16 which is the official ratio for shorts and TikToks. Now, the video Grok generates isn't exactly 916. It leaves some black bars. You have to adjust this yourself. If you are using CapCut, it's very easy. Simply set the scale to 120, and it will fill the screen perfectly and adjust automatically. Now, I have some more arrangements to do for the rest of the clips. I will do them quickly. Once I have finished that and unlocked the voiceover track, now we need to create subtitles or captions. Before creating captions, make sure to select all your voiceover clips and combine them into a compound clip. This ensures the captions are generated all at once for the whole track. Go to the text tab, select auto captions and hit the generate button. And just like that, our captions are ready. Now we simply need to add animations to the captions according to your own taste. Go to the text settings, choose your favorite animation style Pick a nice font, maybe add a background color or stroke. You can customize it all to make it pop. I will also go through and add transitions manually between the clips where I feel they aren't syncing perfectly, or if the cut isn't quite smooth enough, just to polish it up, I have done everything. The video is completely ready. Simply click export. And now I will leave you with the final result so you can see what we created. Pip, a tiny mouse with very large ears, nervously held his very last acorn. Oh dear, he squeaked to his best friend, a wise old owl named Professor Hoot. The winter pantry is empty, and this is all I have. Professor Hoot blinked his big amber eyes. Ah, oh, but Pip, he cooed softly. That's not just any acorn. That's a thank you acorn. You saved it to share, didn't you? Pip nodded, remembering he'd saved it for Hoot. Well, the magic of sharing is strong. Hoot smiled. Plant it right there. Pip dug a tiny hole and buried the acorn. He felt silly, but he trusted his friend. The moment he covered it, the ground shivered. Whoosh! A tiny sprout shot up, twisting and growing right before their eyes. In seconds, it became a small, sparkling tree, heavy with the biggest, shiniest acorns Pip had ever seen. Hoo hoo! chuckled Professor Hoot. You see, Pip, when you give from the heart, the world always finds a way to give back. Pip giggled, his pantry worries gone, and started gathering the magical feast.